Hey everyone and welcome to Low Cost Hobbies again. In my hand today is a plain print hailer. Is it worth your time to print? Is it worth the effort? Let's find out, shall we? So this is the plain print halo. It's a 1.2 meter flying wing design from plain print. Control surfaces here are just two because it is a flying wing. It's just on Elevon controls. And as with all Elevon control surfaces, they need to be on two separate servers. The tail is just a vertical stabilizer with no elevators. And it also comes in two wing options where you have this one, which is the motor nose, which is an extra cost for plain print. But it also comes with this, a glider, pure glider nose, where you don't put any motor in it. And it fits right on both of the nose interchangeable. Carbon requirements for the halo is just simply a 5mm carbon rod so that's not very expensive. The material it's printed in predominantly lightweight PLA so you and this is foaming lightweight PLA by the way not pre-foamed for the wings and the tail but the main fuselage and the nose they're done in PLA and that's because you need a little bit of weight to get CG as well as for the intended use case of the halo which is a coastal Sora, and trust me, it works. In terms of servos, at the moment for this particular model, I've only got two grams because that two gram servos because that's what I've got lying around. Preferably, I think you'd want to be putting in four four gram servo or four and a half gram, maybe six gram servos in there. But it is a maximum height of about nine millimeters, so keep that in mind. If you go down the modified servo areas that I've done to this particular model then essentially you could go put whatever size um, servo you want on there you gotta mind the weight and all that so it's up to that so to disassemble for transport you take off this screw here one screw and this other screw here Take out the so as mentioned the nose. It's it's tight, but that's good to be tight. Take out the two servos from your receiver, and as you can see here, there's the pack size. The best battery is what I'm using here is a 450 milliampere uh, 3S tattoo. Probably doesn't need 3S, could probably get away with 2S. But since this is what I had and it slots perfectly in there and it makes great weight, it's fantastic. For the glider nose inside as well, as you can see I've chucked a little bit of weight in there. I will shove some blue tack right underneath there to keep it secure, but that is a good thing for the glider nose. But as I mentioned before, essentially because this motor provides nice ballast weight together with a 450 milliamp battery, I tend to just use the motor nose. Keep in mind though, the motor nose is 10 euro additional cost for the halo. I think it's worth it though. So plain print is one of my favorite design houses. If I want quality, always good to print models. It's my go-to. Plain Print just has some amazing models in their repertoire. It is a little bit on expensive side. Essentially, for a small flyer, this is 26 euros, so you know, give or take about double that in Australian dollars, plus a 10 euro cost for the motor nose. It is a little bit up there. However, with Plain Print, you really do see the quality. The manual is just absolute top-notch. Very high production quality with the manual. You can follow it really well. The designs that are going to it, very smart as well. Lots of little nifty designs that they put in there. Big fan. The other thing I love about Blink Print designs is not only are they really well designed, but they test them extensively. Renee 
with tests in Austria. I'm a part of the Facebook group and you see his testing process and he really spends the time to test it. It's just, so by the time you get the model and you print it out, you can be really assured that when you fly it, it's gonna fly well and it's gonna fly as it's supposed to. And the good thing about this halo is, as you will see later, that it's actually quite capable, no matter how much wind you put it. I'm sure there's a top limit, but I did try to chuck it in very, very high winds and it seemed to handle it. Enough talking about the model, let's take her out for a flight and uh, you can see how she performs in a slope saw in some pretty ridiculous conditions. All right, in all honesty, I think this is not the right conditions to launch the halo, but I'm just gonna give it a go. I'm just gonna go down here. Hopefully it doesn't get hit into a million pieces. This is intense, this wind. I think the jet wing would be a much better thing to throw off, but ah, let's see how we got. Yeah, she's all right. She's all right. <laughs> oh, let's get out of this freaking crazy. So I think all in all, I can re definitely recommend a plain print halo, even though at its price point, with that additional cost for the motor, I think it's just a great all around little thing. If you like slope soaring, it can fit in your backpack, take it hiking with you and get to the coast, it's just awesome. The print and assembly was fantastic and it's a highly capable little thing. Very simple, very quick to print, so if you lost it, it's a very easy remake, it's just not much else I can say about it. It's just amazing. So I think it's definitely worth your print. It's definitely worth your time to assemble and it's definitely worth your time to fly. And with that, that's my recommendation. Thanks for watching another episode of uh, Low Cost Hobbies. I hope I'll see you next time. See ya.